Did you know that Mars is inhabited only by robots? That's right, in 2024, the only active beings on Mars are three rovers named Curiosity, Perseverance, and Tianwen-1. And it looks like this will continue for quite some time. But why so much interest in Mars? What drives the idea of colonizing the Red Planet? Let's find out together. Imagine the following scenario. Something very serious happens on Earth, like a nuclear war or an asteroid collision. If we had humans living on Mars, our species could continue to exist. If the dinosaurs had had a colony on Mars, they might still be alive today. This is the survival argument. Colonizing Mars could be a matter of life and death for humanity. It sounds dramatic, doesn't it? But it makes sense. On the other hand, some see the colonization of Mars as an opportunity for prosperity. The commercial and industrial exploration of the solar system could bring wealth and drastically improve life on Earth. Just imagine. Less violence and disputes between nations because everyone has access to abundant resources from space. This is the prosperity argument. Who wouldn't want to live in a more peaceful and prosperous world? During the space race of the last century, the competition between the United States and the Soviet Union was a show of technological strength. But today, in the first half of the 21st century, private companies like SpaceX, Orbital, Northrop Grumman, and Sierra Space are at the forefront of space exploration. Figures like Jeff Bezos, with his Blue Origin, dream of a future where millions of people can travel and even work in space. It sounds like science fiction, doesn't it? But this is the current reality. Personally, I am fascinated by the idea of humans inhabiting Mars. But I need to be realistic. Humanity is not ready for this yet. And trying to colonize Mars now could be disastrous. There are four major reasons why we won't be able to colonize Mars or anywhere else in space anytime soon. First challenge, getting off Earth. Earth's gravity is powerful, and we need to overcome this force to get into space. To escape Earth's gravitational pull, we need to move at about 11 km per second, and the only way to do that is with rockets. But they are incredibly inefficient and expensive. To get one ton of material into space, we need a 40-ton rocket. That's because most of the weight is fuel. Have you thought about the cost of that? It sounds like a real physics puzzle, doesn't it? Maybe a solution is to colonize the moon first. An industrial colony on the moon could make exploring Mars much cheaper. But colonizing the moon faces the same technical challenges as colonizing Mars. So it won't happen anytime soon. Let's imagine we overcome the challenge of leaving Earth. The second big obstacle is the journey to Mars. Mars is over 200 million kilometers from Earth, and a trip there takes about 260 days. We already know that the lack of gravity causes muscle atrophy and vision problems in astronauts. Additionally, we are exposed to solar radiation in space, increasing the risk of chronic diseases. Not to mention that Mars is full of perchlorate, a toxic substance for humans. So even if we get there, life on Mars will be anything but easy. The third challenge is keeping humans alive. We need food and oxygen. Mars has water, which can be used for drinking and producing oxygen. But the Martian base would have to recycle everything, even biological waste. A closed ecosystem is necessary, but experiments like Biosphere 2 have shown that this is extremely difficult. Additionally, there's the problem of human psychology. In the experiment, the eight participants split into two groups that hated each other. Imagine this happening on Mars. Survival is not just a matter of resources, but also how people handle isolation and forced cohabitation. And here comes the fourth challenge, space psychology. Surviving is not enough. Colonizers need to maintain psychological stability to make sensible decisions. The psychological profile of the first colonizers would be similar to that of Arctic and Antarctic explorers, not astronauts. And they need to be very resilient. A colony on Mars would have to ensure the survival and mental health of its inhabitants. And this requires a lot of energy. 
Our best bet would be nuclear fusion energy, but it's not technically possible yet. Fission nuclear reactors are an option, but sending nuclear material to Mars is risky. And even if everything works, we still don't know how plants will behave on Mars or how to build efficient infrastructure there. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to grow food in Martian soil? What adaptations would be necessary? So why do we insist on colonizing Mars? Is it worth it? The exploration of Mars could bring wealth and prosperity, but transporting resources from there to here is a giant problem. It would be necessary to move billions of tons of materials, something our current technology cannot do. And what about the survival argument? For a colony on Mars to ensure the continuity of humanity, it would need to be self-sufficient in food, energy, and water. And that includes having babies on Mars. Now, think about the physiological and psychological challenges of raising children in such a hostile environment. It's scary. We don't know how reduced gravity and background radiation would affect babies. And this without considering the ethical aspects of such experiments. To overcome these challenges, we need to advance a lot in technology and science. We need to ensure the survival of our civilization on Earth first. Without that, we have no chance on Mars. The challenge is not just technological, but also moral. We need to solve our problems here to have a real chance of success on Mars. The colonization of Mars will require very advanced technological infrastructure. We need a deep understanding of space medicine and psychology, especially regarding Mars's reduced gravity. We need to conduct research missions to study potential colony sites and perhaps even build a rocket factory on the moon before attempting to create a colony on Mars. Ensuring humanity's excellence on Earth for the next centuries is crucial if we want to colonize Mars one day. Without a future worthy of an advanced civilization, where scientific advances are treated as important and the safety of Earth's inhabitants is respected, we won't be able to survive on Mars. Getting to and surviving on Mars is not just a technological challenge, but a moral one. We need to learn to solve our problems here on Earth if we want to have a real chance on Mars. When we think about colonizing Mars, we are dealing with the unknown. Human history is full of examples of exploration and colonization, but none compare to the complexity of living on a different planet. In Earth's poles, we face extreme conditions, but we still have the protection of the atmosphere and natural resources. On Mars, we would have to create everything from scratch. Have you thought about the work that would be? It's like trying to build a city in the middle of the desert, only much worse. There is also the issue of environmental impact. On Earth, we have already caused significant damage to our own ecosystem. Are we ready to take on the responsibility of not repeating the same mistakes on another planet? And how do we deal with the morality of exploring a planet that, as far as we know, is uninhabited, but may contain microbial life forms? Do we have the right to completely modify another world? Another interesting point is the role of private companies in space exploration. With companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin leading the way, space exploration is becoming increasingly commercial. Is this good or bad? On one hand, competition can accelerate technological advances and make space exploration more accessible. On the other, there is a risk that commercial interests will prevail over ethical and scientific considerations. Have you ever thought about that? Additionally, the financial aspect cannot be ignored. Colonizing Mars would require a colossal investment. We are talking about trillions of dollars. And who would pay that bill? Governments, private companies, or would it be a joint effort by humanity? And what would be the economic implications of such an undertaking? Would it be an investment that benefits everyone, or would only an elite have access to the fruits of this exploration? For the colonization of Mars to be viable, we need significant progress in various areas of science and technology. We need to better understand how the human body reacts to long periods of low gravity and radiation exposure. We need to develop advanced recycling and food production technologies. And above all, we need to ensure that people are mentally prepared for the challenges of isolation and living in a hostile environment. And if we manage to overcome all these challenges, 
What would that mean for humanity? Would it be the beginning of a new era of exploration and expansion beyond our home planet? Or would it be just another chapter in the long history of attempts and failures? Only time will tell, but one thing is certain, the human spirit is resilient and curious. We always seek new horizons, new frontiers to be explored. Mars is just the next step in this endless journey. Therefore, when thinking about colonizing Mars, we are not only looking at the future of space exploration, but also reflecting on what it means to be human. We are questioning our limits, our capabilities, and our responsibilities. And that, in itself, is already a fascinating journey. So, if you could be one of the first colonizers of Mars, would you go? What motivates you? Curiosity, the search for a new beginning, or the hope of ensuring the survival of our species? Leave your comment below and let's continue this conversation. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.